It's March 2023, and today we are looking at the very first major crisis in confidence for the U.S. banking sector that we've seen in nearly three years since the March 2020 complete collapse of the markets. But really, it's the first time that we've discussed this in 15 years since the 2008 failure of the financial system, which led to the collapse, famously, of Lehman Brothers. Now, just on Thursday, we saw the first collapse of a major bank since 2008, or the largest collapse of a bank since then, the second largest banking collapse in the history of the United States. Now, what does it really mean? Now, what it really means right now is that all these banks have loaded up throughout 2020 and 2021 on long-term, low-risk U.S. government bonds. Now, effectively, this is considered one of the lowest risk ways to manage a treasury in the entire world, buying debt from the U.S. government. But Silicon Valley Bank, which just collapsed, the second largest banking collapse in the history of the country, collapsed because too much of their money was in those bonds. And once you get over a short-term T-bill, as they call it, or a longer U.S. bond, uh, two years plus, I believe, is the minimum, you end up actually having those bonds trade in the market. Because over that duration period, as sort of the market changes, the value that someone will buy that bond for you might change. Now, if they were to be able to wait, this is the key to understand this. If the banks were able to wait the two years for those bonds to mature, or the amount of time for those bonds to mature, they would have not lost money. But because there was a run on the bank and so many people wanted their money back today, 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 the bank was forced to sell those bonds to the open market at a loss and effectively crystallize that loss. I talked about this on the last uh, episode. Now, what's happening right now is effectively the government needs to decide, are they going to let this bank fail and let $200 billion of value or $160 billion of value go poof? Or are they going to make it very clear to the American public that your deposits will be backstopped? Because there is a ton of money in what we call regional banks, smaller banks, much like Silicon Valley Bank, that are not, you know, Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase, um, Wells Fargo, or effectively the too big to fail SI, uh, systematically important banks, SIBs. Okay, so now we understand this bank failed because it invested in government debt, which is supposed to be the lowest risk thing you can do with your money. Now, if the government lets a bank that invested in its own debt go under and that lets the normal people who deposited in there pay the price, then I believe that we are looking at a moment, or at least people believe, I'm not gonna make broad statements like this because these are moments where we're not trying to cause panic, right? Panic is probably the biggest enemy here and the collapse of the banking system or a huge banking issue is the last thing that I really wanna see. Despite the fact that of course, this is what crypto and Bitcoin were literally made for. Bitcoin was literally designed for a moment just like this. It was created in the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis, and it literally has references to that crisis in the Genesis block. So is this a big moment for Bitcoin? Absolutely. But there should be nobody rooting for an, a complete banking fallout here. I think that would be the absolute wrong thing. That's just my personal approach. What I want to be clear here is that we're looking at a moment where there are new small regional banks coming under fire now across the nation. And the big worry by the government is that effectively there will be runs on these banks and people will try to move all their deposits over to the bigger banks that they know the government will backstop and that they'll do it all effectively on Monday morning. So here we are on Sunday and we're starting to hear words that the government, the Fed, is looking to do exactly what I believe that they would do, exactly what I predicted they would do, which is that they're going to effectively say, hey, look, if you bought government bonds from us, the government, we're going to allow you to take them out um, and have that full value of your government debt before maturity, meaning the government will pay you back effectively early. They'll advance uh, that debt that you have, that, that bond you have, so that you can meet the needs of your depositors. Meaning, if you buy U.S. government debt and it's doesn't hold up in the market during the course of the bond duration, which is what, what's happening right now. I don't, I don't mean to use confusing words, but this is just what it's called, right? The bond duration, how long it takes for the bond to pay you back. During the course of that bond duration, it's life. If it goes down in value before you can redeem it, uh, they're going to say, hey, look, we're going to fix that for you. Effectively, this is another way that the government is buying its own debt, which the market is valuing at lower than it should. 
So effectively, the government is going in and buying out undervalued uh, debt to itself. This is the first step, in my opinion, of having a full-on government intervention in the banking system. It's very important that they do this, right? Because if Silicon Valley Bank uh, doesn't get backstopped, it's gonna lead to, uh, I believe it could lead to panic. That panic would be very, 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 very bad. Um, and so whether or not this is true, that this will cause a bank run, I believe this is a huge moment in history that we're looking at right now. This is the moment, I just tweeted about this, that the world will collectively wake up to what decentralized money is. And if the bank starts printing money or, or buying bonds to fix the issue that they've created, essentially having so much money come into the system so people deposit a bunch of more money in 2020, then the banks need to do something with that money. And so they put it into government bonds, then they raise interest rates and effectively screw the banks over, which is what's pretty much happened here. There are tons of banks, not just Silicon Valley Bank. There are tons of banks that fall into this category of having tons of uh, underwater bond purchases from 2020 and 2021. So what's going to happen now is the banks now need a backstop. And if the Fed starts coming in or the government starts coming in and effectively fixing it by buying their own debt uh, at face value, but not at market value, then that is the first step in effectively the government starting to buy its own supply, starting to get high on its own supply, right? And if you can't see how that is going to create more inflation, more money in the system, more effective risk in the system, uh, then I'm here to tell you it will. This is the first step to money printer go burr. It's not there yet. It's not there yet. But if the government starts structurally buying its own bonds to control the curve, to control uh, the way that the economy is going, then that is intervention. That is money printer. And that is the path structurally to sending risk assets higher and effectively devaluing the U.S. dollar. It devalues the U.S. dollar long term, right? We're talking about structural devaluation of the U.S. dollar, which is the literal point of Bitcoin, why it was created. Now, here's what I think is going to happen. Uh, I want to be very clear. I think that there's still a very big risk of big negative events to the downside. We do not know if everything's you know peachy keen right now. There's absolutely no way that anyone can tell you we're up only. There's a lot of really good traders on crypto Twitter right now claiming they see a massive face ripping rally in the cards. I'm not trading this aggressively. I'm waiting because I know that once we see true government intervention, if that's what's about to happen, once we see a very significant effort for the government to bail out banks, that's when we can say, okay, I believe structurally there's a lot more money coming into the system and that could lead to higher prices. And once we start seeing that, we could say, okay, uh, it's probably a good time to start allocating aggressively. Personally, I'm, I'm still in a very cautious pattern. Uh, um, again, I've gotten a ton of flack over the last year for not being aggressive, but I will tell you when I think the time is to be aggressive. For now, I've been protecting capital absolutely religiously. I've been aggressively protecting capital and I'm so thankful I have been because every single rally has fizzled out, even this last big one. So um, I believe that there's a huge, huge uh, event happening here. I believe it's a, a turning point uh, sort of ideologically for the crypto industry and for Bitcoin. And I believe that the world will soon wake up and now understand just how vulnerable money in a bank truly is and just how sort of flawed the fractional reserve banking system is. Hopefully this leads to a ton more excitement, understanding and empathy for the crypto ecosystem because people treated everyone with money in Celsius, with money in FTX, as if they were degenerate gamblers when that's not really what people were doing. People believed that they had sort of, you know, basic financial services there that they could rely on. And now they're seeing that in Silicon Valley Bank, a, a totally regulated, totally homegrown, totally within the bounds bank that just bought government debt with its with its depositors uh, uh, balances, which is totally, totally normal. Well, they're about to find out that it's not just the crypto folks that can suffer these these tragic sort of moments. And I think that, you know, effectively, the government needs to show that there's a difference between sticking your money um, in an offshore crypto exchange and sticking your money in a U.S. regulated bank. Because if there's not, what's the point? What is the point of this regulation that everyone's screaming about that's going to help fix crypto? I don't think it's going to fix anything if effectively we're at the risk of a 100% or 99% loss um, just by holding our money in a bank. It doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. Uh, now, to be clear, it's looking as though Silicon Valley Bank will see a very large majority of the funds returned to their depositors. 
Uh, we don't know what that number is going to be, but we've just seen the announcement that the government is really looking to do something here because they know if that if banks open up tomorrow and that there's no motion, that there's nothing done, um, and that people are just left to wonder what could happen if there's a run on their own bank, that they don't have something firm to, to lay their head onto, that's where the fear right now is is coming in. Um, and, uh, and there's a lot of bad takes on the internet, so just be careful. Um, but again, I believe that all of this will work to collectively raise the understanding. It's a, it's a turning point, um, seeing this kind of activity in banks that we haven't seen in 15 years, uh, but is literally the core, the bedrock of cryptocurrency is the understanding that banks uh, are not a safe place for your money. The system is not designed to protect you. And that's the unfortunate reality. Hopefully something we can make better over the coming years. Again, my heart goes out to anyone affected. Um, I'm not cheering for anything negative to happen to these banking inst institutions. I don't think it's good for the world. Uh, but in the end, this is uh, the reason why we prepare for these bad situations in crypto and why we have this industry in the first place is because I believe access to your money is a human right. And I believe that it's going to be a very interesting next few months and years. Uh, but if we see the Fed come in and start backstopping stuff, backstopping the financial uh, system, this is where you can start seeing structurally a whole lot more U.S. dollars coming into the uh, coming into the economy. And it's only natural in my mind that over time that creates uh, a bazooka cannon of money that will lift asset prices such as Bitcoin, crypto, Ethereum, etc. As always, MLEO Trades, if you guys enjoyed this, stick around. Make sure you subscribe because we're going to be having more up to the minute, up to date uh, coverage of everything going on here. It's extremely fast times here at Crypto High. And I hope you guys are strapped in. I hope you guys are diversified. Like I said, I have a lot of money in T-bills, uh, which effectively is not susceptible to a bank run. Uh, I have a lot of money uh, still in USDC. I, I didn't flee USDC uh, because I'm, based on my math, uh, there will still, you know, the likelihood is that it will repeg. It might not. It might stay at 95 cents. It might stay at 93 cents. I don't know. Um, but I do believe that this resolution, I, I, I believe that it makes sense enough for there to be a resolution uh, for Silicon Valley Bank. And at the worst case is a couple of percent loss here on USDC, uh, which I'm willing to stomach. Uh, don't keep your money in USDC because of me, make your own decisions. But that's just what I'm doing. I'm just trying to share transparently what I've been up to. Um, and uh, and yeah, and so we'll be keeping you up to date here. Make sure you subscribe, put that bell notification on with the, with the notification set to all. We have some crazy, crazy content coming for you. Stuff that was more macro, stuff that didn't quite fit the crypto uh, narrative just exactly. But now with everything happening that's just happened, I believe uh, some of the videos I have coming for you this week that I've put on hold because of this breaking news stuff, uh, I believe they'll be extremely relevant. So you'll, you'll definitely want to stick around. As always, I'm Elio Trades, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.